Welcome to my latest painting update. Um, this update covers the month of March 2021 and as you can see I've been painting miniatures for my Crimean War project. There are 92 miniatures here which is nearly halfway for the project in, in one month. Um, I started putting colour on the first unit here on the, the 1st of March. Um, in total there'll be about 220 something miniatures when the project's done. That will give me um, two matched armies, a Russian army and an allied army made up of mostly British with a couple of units of French infantry. Okay let's get stuck in. Um, I think I'll start from the front and work my way back. Right at the front then we've got a unit of British 95th Rifles. They're skirmishers, so they're on two 40mm round bases. Um, they're, uh, all the miniatures here, except for the unit right at the back, which I'll get to at the end, are from Great War miniatures, which I got through um, North Star miniatures, who um, have been very good with quick turnaround and all the usual good stuff from a decent company. I've started this project with sharp practice as a template. So I've arranged things in, apart from the skirmishers, in eight man units. This has given me a framework to work with and a figure total to aim for, um, which I've increased. But the reality I think is that I will probably be using some sort of variant of Neil Thomas's one hour war games or warfare in the 19th century. Um, although I will try sharp practice and maybe I'll love it like so many other people seem to do. So with that said, let's look at a group of infantry. Move my rifles away a bit. Um, let's start with the Coldstream Guards. So, do they, um, hmm, I think that's not too bad as a, there we go, eight Colstrian Guards. So what I've done is I've done the units in pairs. So these are both Colstrian Guards. So for sharp practice, they count as two units. Um, but if you put them down together, then they look like a, a reasonably sized um, war games unit. Um, let's have a look. See, I'm happy with this as like an element base. That works for me. That doesn't make me feel uncomfortable. Um, I'm happier with that as as a unit. Um, so it gives me flexibility. So um, while still keeping a, 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 a nice visual look, which is important. Well, it's important to me. Um, okay. Anything to mention on these? Yes. Well. Uh, Flags. Flags are from GMB Designs. They're very lovely. Uh, North Star do do Crimean flags, but when I went to order them, they were out of stock of the Coldstream Guards. So um, I went elsewhere and I found everything I needed at GMB. I've since learnt, uh, like you do when you're doing historical war games, that the Guards regiments go into battle with the flags reversed. So this regimental colour should be on which side is that? I guess on their right and the the king's queen's color should be on the right uh, on their left god this is complicated isn't it so um here are some 93rd sutherland highlanders their flags are correct okay union flag here regimental flag here guards should have been re reversed so um i don't care not changing it but there you are. See, you learn something. I didn't know that. You learn something every day. Since they're here, let's um, let's move on to the Highlanders. So everyone knows who the Coldstream Guards are. The, these, before I move on to Highlanders, let's just change my plan. These guys and the Foot Guard regiments like them were well, the reason I got interested in the Crimea in uh, 92. I first wanted to do a Crimea project, and I didn't because the rules we were using around about then to do this sort of... Uh, this kind of warfare were 
really well, fairly clunky. They were decent enough, but they required a lot of figures, and I didn't want to paint thousands of thousands of Russians. Um, but when I was a very little boy, um, I had a set of 54 mil toy soldiers, which were um, ceremonial Buckingham Palace guards um, from the 70s. They had SLR rifles, and they were shooting them and throwing grenades and I thought this was terribly exciting. My father pointed out, of course, that they didn't go into battle like this, and that was a bit disappointing. And then I suddenly found that in the Crimean War, well, they did. They wore their bearskins and their red coats. And um, so to me, this is quintessential um, British Army sort of dress warfare, um, far more than, than um, Napoleonic's is. Right, sorry. Um, Move the Coldstream Guards. 93rd Sutherland Highlanders. These are the original thin red line. Um, there they go. Two of those, again, done exactly the same way. So what I do, there's a six-man command pack, and I, and I get two six-man marching packs, and I don't use two of the marching figures. So um, I arrange the flags and a sort of main officer on one base and he gets somebody with him in this case the bagpiper and then the sergeant and the drummer I think the sergeant is here well the drummer and another officer ought to be over here somewhere I seem to have missed off the other officer I wonder where I put him oh well whatever but there's always something on this base to act as a sort of commander thing they've got a drummer okay so 93rd Highlanders very nice uh, okay, so that's the British for the moment. Move them to one side. Um, I have two units of British line infantry, which are the 47th Regiment, I think, Lan Lancashire Regiment. They're done. They're waiting for their bases to be finished off on my on my um, painting table at the moment. So they'll be in the next update. Um, when I did this project, the thing I didn't want to paint was Russians. So I started with this unit of Russians. Let me just get both of them. Whoop. Um, there we go. Oh. Uh, because I had a lot of Russians, and they're all, as you can see, the Russians were very similar. Um, so I thought I'd get some Russians out of the way first, so I did these. Then I did the Highlanders, because they were the most complicated um, unit. And then I did more Russians, and then the guards, and I did more Russians. And then I ordered the wrong figures, because I'm completely rubbish at this hobby. And I had to do more Russians while I waited for the British, right, British command to arrive. Um, and anyway, so here we go. So right, these Russians. Basic Russian infantry in caps. Um, I don't know what regiment they are. They have, a, they have nondescript flags, which are just um, sort of general pattern flag. Um, because the flags here have little blue lines on them, I gave them blue facings. They have lots of different colour facings. Um, and they're wearing their... I'm hoping... Yeah, it's not bad, is it? It's focused enough. Um, there's a sergeant pointing and an officer, a couple of flags. And uh, then on this base... Oh, there's a drummer. Is there a drummer? There's a drummer at the back on that base. And here they've got a, a secondary officer to make them look. Okay. So, um, so they got blue facings. I thought these would be terribly boring to paint and very tedious. And in fact, they're a breeze. They're really quick and I love doing them. Um, one of the problems with the Crimea is the Russian army was so awful and the British army was so good, um, except for the leaders who were universally awful on, on, on both sides, um, except for a couple of, of, of the British... Um, generals and probably the French are okay but you know French so um, rules wise you have to kind of beef up the Russians and lower the British otherwise uh, it's very unpleasant for the Russian player but um, the way I intend to do it is that just the, a Russian unit like this will represent like twice as many men as the corresponding British unit um, I may though as time goes on I may see my way to painting a bunch more Russians so they do actually uh, outnumber the British. Um, we'll see how it goes. Okay, so that was the first unit of Russians basic infantry in caps.
So, so far, each of these units, the guards, the Highlanders, the Russian infantry, um, I'm getting them done in, in four painting sessions. So that's sort of four or five hours for a, for a, a double set like this. Um, there's, a, there's an intermediate day where I base one set and do the, the base coating on the next set. Um, but that really doesn't count as part of the, the painting. So every five sessions, I'm I get a fully based finished twin set like this and the next pa pair of units is is on the way uh, right so once I've done the Highlanders I moved on to some Russian Grenadiers to sort of change it up Put them. here are the Russian Grenadiers ba bump and oh excuse me there we go right Russian Grenadiers Look at that, they've got nice helmets. they got grey coats. Russians had a, well, brown or grey, that was your choice. Um, now, unfortunately, <laughs> it's not the helmets that make them grenadiers. The only difference between Russian grenadiers and Russian infantry, as I can see, is grenadiers have uh, swords. They have a little sword there. And uh, infantry don't. Infantry just have a, have a, a bayonet. Okay, that's the difference. Uh, they have a nondescript uh, grenadier regiment flag. I don't know what regiment it is. It's just grenadier. and so they got red facings because their flag has red on it. Let's just put them back there so they look a bit. Okay, so again, they were just as quick to do as the other Russians. The mighty, mighty empire marches on. Then, then I got my British unit mixed up, so I couldn't do another British unit. So I did Russian infantry in helmets. Um, I also didn't have the command for these, but anyway, uh, let's get those somewhere in the middle. All righty. So again, virtually the same as grenadiers. Um, the only difference is those swords. So, uh, and these guys, these have got a white flag, so they've got white facings. Uh, again, don't know what regiment it is. Don't really care, to be honest. Um, you know, fine Russian chaps. There they go. So I did, uh, I painted them without their command. The command came later. When the command stand did arrive, um, painting six miniatures, excuse my arm, um, is not an efficient use of my time. Um, so what I did was I painted um, this Moscow regiment at the same time. As you can see, the Moscow regiment gives a bit more variety to the Russians. They've got these red hats. They're not fezzes. They look like fezzes, but actually they've got little leather peaks and they've got red trousers and sort of gaiters and boots. Now these miniatures are from Foundry. They're um, I think they're slow. it's hard to tell with let's find some caps. I can say it's hard to start. I think they're slightly they're not really smaller are they? Um, they, all, they all go well together. There we go. Um, Great War miniatures don't do a don't do a Moscow regiment. Um, they also don't do Russian lancers, and I wanted some Russian lancers, so um, I decided to get three from Foundry. There'll be three cavalry to a unit, and to make the the postage worth it, I um, I bought this pack. They come in eights, which is quite handy. So there's no sort of like officer figure. It's, they're all exactly the same miniature. But there we are. So one unit for this project of um keep putting him down on grit really annoys me <laughs> of um moscow unit uh and then that's then when i finished off the command i also dropped in these two skirmish bases of rifles so that's where we're at at the moment 92 miniatures um in april um 16 more british infantry just 
ready to start off May. Um, and another two units of Russian Grenadiers, but this time in caps. Uh, and, um, and I'm going to carry on from there. So um, I guess that's it for this week, or this update, this month. These are monthly updates now. Um, really sorry if you're not interested in the Crimea or historical wargaming, but there you go. The next one's going to be the same as this. Um, I'll be nearly finished, I should hope, by the end of um, May. Um, and there should be some interesting cavalry to show you, if I'm lucky. Some light brigade and some heavy brigade and some Russian hussars and stuff. And then it's just be artillery and generals and I'll be done. And then um, hopefully I can get a sort of panorama shot and it, it'll be, you know, with some uh, with some scenery out. I, I want to get some Russian buildings from hovels, so they'll be added as well. Okay, um, so for now, thank you for watching um, and I'll see you next time.